Word. Good day everyone, this is Eric from Manila, Philippines and I'm going to give you a massive review of some of the finest fingerboard techs that we have here in the Philippines. Fingerboarding started here roughly 99 to 2000. At that time, fingerboarding was underground and mostly skaters are the one who's playing fingerboards and that includes me. They are the pioneers of the uh, uh, Philippine fingerboarding scene. Uh, Bike Vergara, the owner, started to build this fine decks uh, back in 2009 with the desire to provide the best wooden fingerboard to locals at a very decent price. But good about uh, their fingerboards is since 2009, they never changed the shape and quality of the deck. Bike has uh, perfected the fabrication of dirty fingerboards and establish its name even in the international scene. Mike Schneider recognized the good quality of the deck and incorporated them in Flatface Webster in 2010. Well, since then, the DFBs had uh, huge followers from international and local scene. They even had international writers. What I have here is a 13mm deck, 5 plies with premium uh, Philippine exotic veneers, top of the class. Um, the concave is very unique, became their signature ever since. And uh, well, please note that we don't have huge machinery to create decks, so this is really handmade with 100% uh, pure fingerboarding love. It yeah, just are sanded perfectly and uh, you'll be stoked on how clean and neat the edges were sanded. The veneers are dyed real good with uh, vibrant dyes in between plus top of the line wood glues and stuff. Concave is, um, is a low with uh, kicks on the low to medium stances. The deck is very crisp and compact and pops astonishingly loud. This deck is loaded, full of arsenal and really hard wearing. Most of the DFBs are blanks as bikes uh, passion for monochromatic and simplicity. This deck made a huge impact in the evolution of and progression of the local Philippine scene. They became a household name for every fingerboard. This is the most uh, significant, moreover, noteworthy deck this country has ever made. So that's 30 fingerboards. After the hasty hype made by DFB, an emerging fingerboard tech came up. Jericho Talion, owner and uh, Chino Lim, developer, were cooking something. A different tech to satisfy some of the needs of the Pinoy fingerboarders out there. Don't get me wrong, they are not against the flow or something and these guys together with bike are good friends. So in 2010, the Liberty fingerboards came up. Powerhouse uh, fingerboard brand from down south. This deck is 30, uh, 30.55 millimeter, five plies. Word. The concave is low to mellow and a relaxed feel on top. Kicks are medium high with no steeper and longer than tail, which is very, very good. The veneers are top notch and uh, crisp, and uh, the dye colors are perfect. Holes were drilled with countersink and were perfectly aligned. So this deck is sexier than the aggressive look of dirty fingerboards. They had some prototypes before as they were trying to come up with a specific shape for, uh, fit for their styles. I believe I owned uh, one luckily. They had the curly maples before which were a bit shorter and measures 28-29mm. Then they came up with this uh, famously known as the classic shape. 
the pop is excellent you can hear the and and feel the wood the shape is totally rare haven't seen anything like this lately and uh, right now they're in a in a way inactive as Jericho needs to concentrate on his final stage of uh, college studies but he confirmed the return of the Larry fingerboard soon I'm personally excited as they reveal a possible project 32 millimeter In the midst of the hype and determined accumulative scene, uh, a powerhouse fingerboard company has risen, Seed Fingerboards. Um, planet Everywhere is how Seed sees on the owner, absurd is uh, ideology. They became a convenient uh, fingerboard company by lodging almost everything a fingerboarder could ever want. They have trucks, bearing wheels, foam tapes, tunings of the course, decks, um, they have been the answer to the new wave of fingerboarders in the Philippines. Almost every one have their products as they deem a more accessible feature which is affordable prices and a friendly customer service. Um, they have uh, pegged four signature shapes, the S1, S2, S3 and the S4. Um, I have the new 32mm S2 and uh, the S4. Okay, here it is, the S2. Uh, 32mm is simply amazing. Though I'm not a big fan of the shape, but I can still say this is a very good deck. High kicks and a bit of a stiff uh, concave, which is, I believe, the deep concave compensates the high kicks. Uh, I guess that's my idea about it. This is uh, five ply, all maple. The edges are pretty much sanded and the whole structure is pretty much lightweight. The um, I know Seed Fingerboards have a system and they have the machinery to build a huge volume of decks which only gives you an impression that they are a foremost contender man. Um, they're totally different. Holes are perfectly drilled with counter sinks and the veneers used were neat and clean. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of the high kick so I can actually pop this to my preference but at least it is popping insanely man. Nose is uh, steeper than the tail but it is hardly recognized but just one look. If you long to gain insane flips then you're definitely going to love this shape. Okay, there's the other one, the S4. On all seeds uh, shape, this one is my favorite, S432 millimeter. This incorporates medium kicks and a considerably low concave. It feels more relaxed, no pressure, and more realistic. Nose is longer than the tail, though it's hard to see it in on my lens, but it's distinctive in person. Holes were, dri uh, holes were drilled perfectly. I tried to install some troughs and uh, a while ago and holes are perfect. No issues at all. This is uh, 5 plies and edges are very smooth and even. The graphic is sick. It looks like a, a biomech concept or whatever but it's good. Um, Seed Fingerboard knows how to play the game in terms of supply and demand business and giving more to the scene they are very much active sponsoring and hosting events and competitions they have some of the best sponsored riders and they are expanding and growing even more man they are also investing on apparels and accessories i can say they are, they are the future of the local scene they will remain resilient and strong Next up, a new founded fingerboard company, FA Fingerboards. FA means uh, for all. Well, despite being new to deck making, their owners are those who've been fingerboarding since 1999. Word. Benny Esten Slough and Resty uh, joined forces to create their own deck, a dream deck. 
Seven Ply. By the way, Resty was the man behind Flatface sticker called Filipino Design, so go check Flatface and you will see there. He designed it for Max Schneider. Um, these guys were playing Plastic Deck uh, back in the late 90s and early 2000s and decided to shift their game with wooden fingerboards. Though it seems the progression and the execution of their plan was stalled until 2011, but it turned out good. After years of developing and designing and experimenting their desired shape, they came up with this. The first ever 7-ply deck made locally. Weird because according to Benny, they are not making 5-ply decks, only 4 and 7-ply. Anyway, they launched a series of deck sizes from a 13mm to 32. Luckily, uh, the owner agreed to build a 33mm FA deck for me. Surprisingly, despite of being 7 ply, the weight is still fine and the veneers used were incredibly thin. You can compare this 7 ply to a 5 ply and the thickness are still the same, man. The concave is very mellow. The nose is longer and steeper than the, the tail. Uh, they are still considered medium kicks, I believe. The quality of the veneer used was totally different. I presume these are not maple, but the pop is overwhelming, man. The deck is so solid, and uh, you can feel the durability of the 7 ply. Another new company has risen, but this time it was art. Run by George Kazem, Mackenzie Fingerboard. The first notable characteristic of Mackenzie is this split plies, baby. Came from nowhere, George has the shook the scene with his abstract and intricate splits. I don't know the where he got the patience, but he is really sick in doing splits, man. Take a look. I have two Mackenzie fingerboards here. This one is 32mm and this one is 34 Both came from the same mold. The shape and mold of these decks are totally different from the traditional decks. The concave is very noticeable and may categorize as a medium to high steep concave. The kicks are totally different from each other, so I really like the diversity of, of this deck. Nose is deeper than the tail. The center uh, width is uh, more stretched than uh, those near the kicks. The holes are huge, but I tried installing some trucks earlier and they fit perfectly. This 34mm is really amazing. The plies are nicely done and the feel of the fingers on the deck is very relaxing. Unlike other split uh, plies, this pops radically because of the solid assembly of the splits. And uh, Mackenzie is the next big thing and uh, they came out inexpensive considering the added effort to create splits.